Hello! Welcome back to Life is Strange Remastered. So, last episode... We saved a life! Uh... Yeah, so last episode we stopped, uh, Kate Marsh from... Uh, from jumping off the roof of, uh, the Blackwell dorm. As I mentioned at the time, it is possible to fail that, in which case she does die, uh, which is pretty damn tragic. Uh, so yeah, this episode, we will be carrying on from that. And, clearly, based on this thumbnail, breaking into the principal's office with, uh, with Chloe. No special music to open this, uh this one. I mean, still nice music. It's just not, you know... Not no light, not light. Very pretty. Like, eh, Max fell asleep at her desk. I've never done that. I don't think I could do that. And my episode three, Chaos Theory. Funny. Kate! Nightmares, clearly. If I have something to show you, meet me in front of campus. I knew Chloe would be all over this. So I better get moving. First I saved Chloe, then Kate, and now you, Lisa. <laughs> Not a bad record for a week. Yeah, if you water Lisa the plant in both episodes one and two, she dies. Hey, Bunny. Kate will be back soon, and until then, I'll be catering to your every whim. <laughs> Are you a hungry, Bunny? Here, nosh on this. Text messages. Yo, yo, Max. Just had to remind you again how fucking awesome you were today with Kate on the roof. I'll make you a superhero suit on the lab's 3D printer. Cool? I'd love to reward you with dinner and escape to a planet of eight planet of apes. No pressure. Truly. Thanks, Warren. I need to rest my Kate tonight. Nathan got suspended too, so it was a good day. I'll call you later, okay? Uh, side note. Uh, if you... In the, uh, final conference, in the final scene, in the principal's office, if you call out Mr. Jefferson for bullying Kate, uh, right before she went off to jump, uh, he will actually be suspended from, uh, suspended from school. 
there will be some uh, there will be a social media page uh, that the students set up to support him and uh, they leave messages well, like I said calling out Nathan is definitely uh, way more important Hey, whore! Feminine Nazis will be exterminated. Watch out. Wonder who that could be from. Uh, also, Feminine Nazis. I feel like you don't hear. I feel like people don't use that term much anymore. You know, I feel like that term sort of fell out of use over the past few years. What a shame, huh? Max, please call us as soon as you can. We are so proud of you for saving this girl. And we want to know how you are, so please, please get in touch. We love you. Sorry, Mom, I'll call you back in a few minutes. I swear. Thanks for letting me gush over our Blackwell hero. I miss your voice. We're very proud of we're very proud, so milk this moment. Let us know if you want it to come up for a quick getaway, okay? We love you, Maxine. Aw. Thanks, Mom. I have something to show you. Meet me in front of campus. Get that ass in gear now. Before I go. Yeah, let's, uh... I didn't want to... Yeah. Eh. Man, as well, I suppose. Uh, so yeah, I didn't want to end the last one on as heavy a note as the dire entries relating to the decade. So, instead I'll bring it up now to make you all relive the, uh, the fear. Kate Marsh almost killed herself. My hands are still shaking, but I have to write this down while I can. Right at the start of Jefferson's class, Kate went to the roof of the girls' dorm to jump. Every student and teacher was watching her, like it was a Blackwell rooftop concert. I saw her actually jump, but I was just about able to use my rewind to get her back on the roof. I tried harder than I ever did, and somehow I stopped time completely. I made it to the roof, but again my head felt like it was going to blow up. I knew that I couldn't just keep rewinding to save Kate. I had to try and talk her down on my own. She was already in so much pain over the video and all the bullying so she wasn't going to buy everything I tried to tell her. You see movies with people trying to talk somebody out of suicide, but it's very different when I'm the one doing the talking. I covered everything I could, and Kate almost jumped anyway. Cliché or not, I told her how much her friends and family love her, even if they don't all show it now. Lo and behold, Kate stepped back from the ledge, alive. I almost cried in her arms. I know this isn't about me, though I have to admit, it was an amazing feeling to walk arm in arm with Kate from the roof to outside the dorm. Like I said, the whole school and police were watching us almost completely silent. Then I heard what sounded like Logan yelling out, Give it up for Max! And everybody started to clap and cheer. Aw, oh, thanks, Logan! He's not such a bad dude. Talk about surreal. The people who ignored me or treated me like crap suddenly crushing on me. That might be the strangest thing that's happened to me this insane week. That made me wonder if Victoria was watching and how she felt about all this. I almost wanted to find her, just to get in her smug face for enabling Kate's suicide attempt. Such cruel bullshit. Though, to be fair, Victoria wasn't the only one that was responsible. Nathan Prescott seemed to have disappeared, which was probably a good thing. And after all that, I still had to talk to the police and give a statement felt so weird to do since I've seen it in pretty much every police procedural show. I had to lie my ass off when he questioned me about the other students, because I just don't think the police are ever going to find out what happened. Yes, this looks like a job for Supermax. Right. Though, of course, I do love it when Chloe calls me that, even if I don't feel that everyday heroic for helping Kate down. 
Maybe it's wrong for me to think that I have to feel anything but grateful that Kate didn't jump. Yeah. Complicated feelings about the whole thing. What was really odd one was, was when all the students and faculty surrounded me and Kate, then started patting our bags and shoulders, like we were heroes. I wasn't sure how to respond, considering Kate almost threw herself off the roof because of everybody at school. But like I said, I can't blame everybody, and I still don't really know where to point all my fingers. The very best thing was that even though Kate was still in tears and confused, I definitely saw her smile and one smile when she realized how happy everybody was that she was alive. I smiled too. The police and paramedics swooped in and then Kate was covered in a blanket and gently escorted to the ambulance. They didn't thank me or look at me like I was a hero. I guess they're used to saving people with that applause. But if I'm super honest, it felt pretty cool. Like I got a hug from the whole school. So maybe Blackwell Academy isn't totally bad. It's not enough that Kate is alive, and though I'm not enough of an egomaniac to take the credit, I still had to get the Black Blackwell third degree from Principal Wells. It was bizarre to be in his talky tacky office with Nathan Prescott, David Madsen, and Mr. Jefferson calmly talking about Kate, why Kate would attempt suicide. I was quiet but giddy inside, just replaying in my head the moment when Kate stepped towards me with a glimmer of hope in her eyes. Part of me wanted to smash Nathan's smug face against the desk, knowing he had a lot, a, a lot to do with Kate's suicide attempt. I thought about doing it, then flipping a quick rewind, but I knew that would be the start of a bad, dangerous habit. I mean... Doing it once, you know, not... Fortunately, Principal Wells amazingly did the right thing and booted Nathan for a few days after I told him what happened in the bathroom. He must have more shit on Nathan, because otherwise I doubt this would happen to a Prescott. That's some small justice for Kate. There'll be more if it's the last thing I do, which it could be if I'm not careful. After being grilled in the principal's den, I hung out with Warren on the lawn so I could feel grass under my feet and watch the fluffy clouds. He's such a sweetheart. He kept telling me how proud he was that I stopped Kate from jumping. I don't believe that I did, but I have to say it's better to be treated like a hero at school than like a twee loser. I will say this. She acts like she's, uh, like, Max acts like she's subjected to a lot of bullying. But aside from Victoria, Taylor, and, uh, Courtney... Not Taylor. Is it Taylor? Yeah, aside from Victoria and her friends, uh, there's not a whole lot of... You now everyone seems civil to her, at least. And a lot, of, a lot of the people even seem to like her. Even, like, you know, even before she started uh, using rewind powers to get people on her side. And Brooke, you know, is always uh, initially rude until you uh, rewind to get her to, to be nice. But that's because she's crushing on Warren, who is crushing on Max. Other than that, I mean, though, I don't know. It doesn't feel like she gets bullied much. Still, I told Warren that something ominous is happening at Blackwell Academy. Rachel Amber, Chloe, and now Kate have all been victims. Not to mention me, if I keep playing amateur detective. Wish I could have let Warren know about my power, but it's not the right time. As if anything is the right time anymore. And to make the day end on the most surreal note possible, the sky went dark and we watched a solar eclipse that was not announced on the news or any astronomer say. What is happening to Arcadia Bay? Yeah. Unannounced, uh... Unannounced uh, eclipses. Not terribly common. Uh, Alright, so. This is disturbing. Yes, I have power, but... Nathan is out of control. Oh, right, the text. How did Sherlock Holmes deduce anything without the internet? Hmm. 
glad the media doesn't waste a second exploiting Kate. Now she has another video of herself all over the web. And even I'm in this one. Oh, at least the news didn't mention my name. Yet. Uh, Blackwell student attempts suicide on campus. A student at the prestigious Blackwell Academy almost jumped from the roof of a campus dormitory today, with most of the student and faculty as startled witnesses. Authorities confirmed that the student, Kate Marsh, 18, had been troubled, but information is scarce at this time. Dozens of cell phones recorded the event, which ended with an unidentified student taking Marsh, talking Marsh down to safety. Click here for video footage and further details. Yeah, kind of ghoulish. Hmm. Besides Rachel, it's been a while since anybody vanished from Arcadia Bay. I shouldn't sound so disappointed. <laughs> yeah, Rachel Amber disappeared uh, April 22nd. Elton Kesey disappeared uh, back in November of uh, 2001. Melissa Lee Grayson, uh, May 1997. Winston Smith, missing since 1984. Uh, do I need to explain the reference there? I think it's a pretty obvious reference, right? Winston Smith, 1984. Winston Smith is the protagonist of 1984. And then Sunshine Ray, missing since 1973. I don't think uh, these three are meant to be uh, specific references to anything or to anybody. But, yeah. How clever. That actually is a really cute uh, reference, I think. I sure hope these people treat her better when she comes back to school. If she does. Uh, Taylor Christensen, get well soon. You are in our hearts. Victoria, sending love to you. Evan, thinking of you. Mark. We love you, Katie. Come back to church soon. Alyssa, we're all behind you, Kate. Courtney, hope you feel better. Father Lamont. Psalm 3418, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And Zach Riggins, Blackwell Bigfoot's promise to win the next game for you. <laughs> yeah. Very, very sweet, Zach. Very sweet. Either I delete my page or I block everybody. Nowhere to hide these days. Time is bunk. Douglas Adams. Evan, you actually made me proud to be at Blackwell. Bravo, Max. Bravo. Daniel. Eris una chica dura. Eh? Eris una chica Dura. You were one tough, I guess you were one tough cookie, I guess is uh, sort of a, uh, you're a tough girl, you're a, yeah, so yeah, you're a tough girl, apparently. Warren Graham, Max Power. Probably a Simpson, probably a re Simpsons reference there. Uh, Hayden Jones, epic. Brooke, watching you walk down from that roof with Kate was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Thank you. Bet you feel bad about watching that video now, huh? Juliet, way to make the headlines, Max. 
Dana, you're a hero, Max. Thank you. I know Juliet did uh, feel bad about watching the video. Uh, no idea if Dana even if Dana watched the video or not. She never mentions it one way or the other. Everybody will be talking about Kate now. Blackwell might as well shut down for the next month. You know you're hurting when you don't give a shit about music. Ew! Thanks for the image, Nathan. And everybody here thinks Samuel is a creeper? I mean... It's amazing how happy Kate looks here compared to today. She was basically pushed up to that roof, and I will use my power to find out why. This has to end. I mean, does she look happy? Nobody in this picture looks particularly happy. Alyssa is a like, bit of a smile, but everybody else is just kind of blank-faced. Jeebus, I am so freaking tired. <laughs> I sound like a moron. But crime does not delay. I need to stay on top of this investigation. No way can I clean that shit off. Time to get Samuel da Vinci to repaint. Oh, I could turn this on. I could turn this off and on. That doesn't actually make the room much brighter. Yeah, that type of lamp is uh, just no help at all. I've got a lamp like that in uh, in my bedroom, and yeah, it's turned on, and I get no light at all from it. Pretty hard to focus on my class schedule this week. I wonder why. Yeah, you're allowed a bad week. It's okay, Max. Take a breath. Get your shit together. You have time. Especially since you can rewind whenever you need to. Okay, this is scary dark. Let there be... We'll wait for Kate, Brooke. Sweet. Where the hell are you, Rachel Amber? Wherever you go, there I am. That's a depressing thought. And it's always about Victoria. Oh. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye could fear frame thy fearful symmetry? I hope you burn bright again soon, Kate. Lake for Kate Marsh. The second best poem about a tiger. The best poem about a tiger, of course, is the tiger. He destroyed his cage. Yes. Yes. The tiger is out. By Neil, age six. 
I better go meet up with Chloe. I mean, of course that's the best poem ever about a tiger. Do they really need that crap on the door? Kate's still alive. I mean, they need to make sure nobody busts it. I suppose the police tape isn't going to stop anybody, but... I don't know. Yeah, they probably kind of do. So much hypocrite. Yeah. Uh, we miss you. Oops. Get well soon. Feel better soon. Blackwell's praying for you. I hope you get better soon. I'm sorry, Kate. Get well soon. The end of the world might be coming before your party. No, end of the world is Friday. Party's on Thursday. So, they're fine. I bet you'll party like it's 1999. Assholes. I feel like you're guiding us along. But where? Love you, Mom. Not sure who's Mom. I hope Victoria feels particularly shitty about posting that link. Well, that's Taylor I was thinking of. I think I was, I think I was mixing up Taylor with, Juli uh, with Juliet for a second. Uh, earlier. She's up late. Hey, Max. I saw you go up on the roof and save Kate. I can't believe she tried to jump. Honestly, blaming her is tempting. I can. I'm just so glad she didn't. Are you okay? I'm just, like, shocked. I've never seen anybody try to kill themselves before. Me neither. I didn't think you'd be so upset considering how much shit you and Victoria gave Kate. I'm my own person, not Victoria's bitch. Hello, like she's freaking too. She already broke curfew tonight. <gasps> shit, I'm not supposed to tell anybody. I won't say a word. I swear to dog. I believe you, Max. Besides Victoria, you're the only one who asked me about my mom in the hospital. Yeah. That meant a lot to me. I'm my I... own person, too. Let me know if you need anything. Thanks. You're, like, weird, but pretty cool, Max. Especially after watching you go up on that roof. Victoria's wrong about you. Now I have to be alone for my nightly anxiety attack. Talk to you later. Oh. Oh, anxiety. Oh, great. <laughs> nightly anxiety. Oh, hell. That's great to learn right there. Uh, yeah, that just uh, derailed me from a thought that I, uh, from a thought I'd had. Oh, right. Uh, only reason I asked about your mom is because I was manipulating you. Oops. Hey, Max. I saw you go up on the roof and save Kate. I can't believe she tried to jump. I know. Victoria must be upset since I saw her sneaking out of the dorm past curfew. Oh man, like, you saw her? She was so, like, nervous when she left the dorm. She wouldn't even tell me where she was going. Probably to hell. Well, I have to go crash. <laughs> it's been a rough day, as you know. Thanks, Max. And it was, like, pretty awesome when you went up to the roof to save Kate. Victoria was wrong about you. Now I have to be alone for my nightly anxiety attack. Talk to you later. Jeez, Taylor actually seems concerned about Kate. Taylor does have a heart. I like really do need to get some sleep, Max. She has a heart, it's just it doesn't, it doesn't always come out. 
especially when she's around Victoria. Kate probably won't want to look at these posters when she comes back. Considering they were a big part of why she got bullied? Yeah. Oh, Victoria isn't here. Maybe I'll just wait and bide my time. Going through her shit. Don't mind me. What? No, no, I'm not doing anything. No. No, I'm totally... Yeah. Since I've crossed the line from Snoop to Detective, I might as well search for clues about what really happened to Kate at the Vortex Club party. Victoria is about as straight as me. But she really appreciates style. Fancy shoes. Those boots are made for walking runways. Yeah, this is maybe the easiest photo in the game to miss. Uh, or one of them, at least. Because you have to actually stand for a few seconds with the light shining on it. Which, you know, who does that, right? Anyway, Parallax View Achievement. And here are all the photos that we will be taking in this episode. Looks like another squirrel photo, I would guess. Beesh. Yeah, Victoria has a glow-in-the-dark statue of what looks like some sort of anime character or something. Could she maybe have a hidden geeky side? If she does, we never find out. Here they are getting loaded with Satan. That reminds me. At the end of the last episode, during the sort of end sequence where it shows different people sort of reacting to things, it shows Victoria sitting on a bed crying. Some people interpret that as her reacting to uh, Kate's attempt at suicide. And the scene, and it does show that, like, it does show her on the bed crying, regardless of who you uh, place the blame on. Even if you pl uh, place the blame on Matt, on David Madsen, who she has no reason to care about. So it's possible that she actually is uh, crying. I have to be extra crispy careful, so I don't get caught outside the dorm this late. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, she has no reason. So, yeah, it's possible that she's caring about, crying about, uh, Kate. I also wonder if it might be possible that she was crying uh, about Nathan getting suspended. That's a lot of bank just to clean paint from a sweater. Uh, yeah, Arcadia Bay Cleaners. Served by Amelia Pond. Doctor Who reference. She, I guess, Amelia Pond, I guess, was one of the Doctor's companions. $30 for a cashmere Honestly? $30 for a cashmere sweater? That doesn't actually seem all that bad. Especially considering how much they done it. Like, the fact that they were able to clean it at all, considering how much paint got on it, I don't know. That doesn't seem like a lot of money. Victoria's Secret. She's a geek. Glow in the dark, blueberry. 
Fancy. Secret geek. There has to be some dirt in here on Victoria. Well, well. Victoria and Taylor actually show remorse. From Victoria to Taylor. Hey, sweet tea. What up? I'm just avoiding some lame-ass science homework. How can anybody do fucking homework after somebody almost jumps off a roof? I can't believe we all saw it live. It was like watching a reality show. And I've never seen the campus so quiet. Like everybody's hiding or afraid. Yes, I feel like total shit for everything I said about Kate in that stupid video. Let's get some peeps to meet up later. This girl needs a serious curfew cocktail. We'll drink to Kate. Uh, from Taylor. What a trip that was today. Seeing Max and Kate like that? I need a drink too. Let me know the time. Good to know that she does feel bad. On a side note, can I just say that Sweet Tea is a very cute nickname? This is like a thread for sociopaths. Max Crackfield? Lame. Party on, dudes. From Nathan. That Tweemo bitch Max Co Cockfield got me fucking suspended. Can you believe it? My dad owns the fucking dorm where she plays with her selfies. My parents have lost their shit and are threatening me with a fucking job in my dad's office. How dumb is he to have me repping him? Max Crackfield and Blackwell need to go fucking down. And the end of the world party is fucking on. You in? Cheers, Prescott. From Victoria to Nathan. WTF, are you kidding me? That is bullshit. No way can Blackwell suspend you. I knew that Max was trouble the first time I saw her ass kissing Mr. Jefferson with that retro camera. Notice that everybody she hangs around gets in trouble. And yes, the Vortex Club will be bringing the end of the world to Blackwell, no matter what. I'll SMS you later so we can plot in person. Hang in there. V. I mean, calling me an ass kisser. You try to. I was about to go somewhere incredibly crude, but no, you're trying to hook up with the guy. First Rachel and now Kate? This is the end of the Vortex Club. I'll title this one, Portrait de la Assholes. Whoa, there's Kate. Totally high. She looks confused. Not like she's partying. These socks cost more than my wardrobe. Steal a pair. Steal a pair. A unique point of view is right. Thanks to Courtney Wagner ghostwriting this paper. Excellent. Well-researched essay with a unique point of view. A. Noir and Day Expressionist Photography by Victoria Chase. Whoa, I had no idea Victoria's parents owned the Chase space. Color me impressed. And I just cut off something she was about to say. Oh well. Nothing interesting in here. She just ran so weird. Yes, I am going to find you, Rachel. For Chloe and Kate. Hey, Max? Come here. Yeah, I'll be there in a second. Waiting for you, Kate. What does it say at the bottom? No money. I have no idea what that says. Dana's really hurting over this.
Dana does seem to be a fairly compassionate person. This is both sad and pathetic. That is so damn cute how much Dana is into this Halloween party. Dana looks guilty and relieved about Kate. She really does care. Hey Dana, how are you doing? Better than Kate. I just can't believe she would even attempt suicide. I knew she was depressed, but I had no idea how bad. Must be serious to throw yourself off the roof. Yeah, I mean, blaming Victoria was tempting, but it probably wouldn't have get, gotten anywhere. Kate was serious, but it's not all about that video. So what exactly are you saying, Max? You think this has something to do with Nathan being expelled? It's complicated. I don't want to drag you into this, okay? Not yet, anyway. I'm getting scared now. But people here are still sneaking out tonight. What? Like, who? Victoria bounced out of here earlier, and now you, Sherlock? Not me. I need a break from today. Get some sleep too, Dana. I'll see you later. I am wiped out, Max. We'll talk later. Yes, the Vortex Club does indeed suck. Dana clearly doesn't mind if I peruse her laptop. I can rewind if uh, she does. Aw, Trevor is a sweetie. Good for Dana. Hey Dana, I've been thinking about you all day and know how hard it was for you to see Kate almost jump from the roof today. Glad that Max swooped in like a superhero. I don't have anything deep or smart to say, I just want you to know that you're a good friend to Kate and I wish she had more friends like you. You have been so good for me when everything else is so fucked up, and I am here for you always. I miss you. Thank you so much for thinking of me. I keep saying Kate on that roof and feel like I should have done more to help her. Max did more than anybody to save Kate, and I don't even, I don't even think they're BFF. I mean, I think we probably are now at this point. After, after I saved her life, I think BFF... You can have more than one BFF. You know, Chloe, BFF, Kate, new BFF. I'm so happy you're thinking about me. I can't wait to see you tomorrow, and you are just as good for me as you think I am for you. Dreaming of you tonight. Eh. I hope she dreams of If them. Dana talks to Juliet about this, she's gonna wish she didn't. Dana, I hope you're doing okay after today. I don't want to bother you, but I'm writing an article about Kate paper, and I wanted to know if you could answer just a few short questions. It seems like there are too few answers. Let's talk when it's convenient for you, okay? I hope you're well. Hi, Juliet. I know you want to find out more about Kate, but I'm still a little, a little shaken up after today. I don't think you'll get too, uh, too many answers so soon after what happened today. And maybe it's better to keep a low profile for the moment. Kate deserves some privacy for a change. I don't think we really know one way or the other, but I have a feeling if anybody at Blackwell was going to not watch Kate's video, I feel like it would be Dana. You know, I feel like Dana probably didn't watch the video. She's a good egg. Kate, just wanting to know you're in our thoughts. Good job, camera. Good job, camera. Praying for a fast recovery, Kate. <sighs> I 
they feel that way now. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things. They feel bad now. But they didn't really seem to care much at the moment. At the time. Until they saw her on the roof. So Chloe is waiting for me in front of the main hall. But first, a nice set. I feel so giddy, even after Kate almost jumped. Maybe it's the leftover adrenaline. But I feel kind of invincible now. Pretty moon. music. Actually... Actually, something kind of weirdly haunting about it. It doesn't really necessarily feel like it fits the mood of what she was just thinking about, or... I don't know. On my way. But first, there's a squirrel. Hello, little friend. Care to join me? Sorry, little squirrel friend. Look at the lens and say nut. Gotcha. And the lens crafted uh, achievement. Cute little squirrel playing with the uh, fireflies. I'm coming. Max? Okay, I suppose I have left her on red for kind of a while. I'll be there in a minute, Chloe. Don't worry. The Tabanka does look pretty scary at night. Please don't destroy me. Ah, fireflies. I like fireflies. Oh, it's unlocked. I hope Samuel isn't around. Lock the... Samuel! Lock the door! Nothing here. I know Samuel doesn't wear silky scarves. So, who does? Does Samuel have a... Does Samuel have a lady friend? Who knew Samuel was so into runway fashion? International model, live your dreams, Hollywood girls. Nuts and bolts. <laughs> like my grandpa's garage. Nothing but tools. What would you expect to find in a toolbox? That said, incredibly dangerous and irresponsible of them to leave this uh, door unlocked.
Everywhere I go, I can see how I'm altering history. Big and small. Principal ah, Wells, oh, are you serious? I'm, I'm toast down. if he sees me. Nobody can expel me. Not yet, anyway. For some reason, I thought he had uh, drinking rampants. Miss Caulfield, you have to be stealthier than that. You're not supposed to be outside your dormitory at this hour. You know that. I, I'm sorry, Principal Wells. I'm still tense after I thought Kate was going to jump today. I just needed some air and space to walk. No, no explanations. Seeing Kate come up on that roof, then seeing her come down with you. You saved her ass. Maybe save Blackwell. Now don't get cocky. Going back inside. You earned good dreams. Aww. Great. So how do I get past him to meet Chloe? Yes. How? Hello? I'm almost there, Chloe. Just give me a minute to rewind this dude back up onto his steps. Or back to his Great, he saw me. Maybe I could sneak by when he was trying to open the door. <sighs> Max the ninja strikes again. And yeah, he is clearly drunk. All right, Chloe. Are you going to do a jump scare on me, Chloe? Are you going to just, like, jump out and be like, Booyah! Ooh. Yeah. Knew it! Get it? Booyah. Like I'm a scary punk ghost. More like a scary punk asshole. Hey, Chloe, I didn't exactly have the greatest day trying to keep my friend from jumping off the roof. I don't think I need you to prank me tonight, okay? Sorry, but you absolutely balls to the walls did save your friend. Kate saved herself. I couldn't even use my power. My head felt like it was being crushed. And then I had no clue what to say to her on that roof. Don't be so modest, Rockstar. Kate is alive because of you. You obviously said the right thing. And your badass power is going to save us all. We just need to connect the plays. And find out who almost killed Kate. We have to stop this from happening to anybody else. Oh yeah, and somehow stop that tornado from wiping out Arcadia Bay, right? Yeah, let's go with, uh, let's go with, this is the name of the episode. So let's Didn't you that. say that it was all about chaos theory? I don't see any control over this chaos. Oh, right, except for your ability to, oh yeah, manipulate time and space? No biggie. Chloe, I just feel weird about some of my decisions. Especially after I just got Nathan expelled. Dude, do not even torture yourself like that. Let's focus on looking for clues, okay? Eh, which one's best to ask about? Kate or Rachel? Right. For one thing, there's too much coincidence between the people around Kate and Rachel. Like Step Prick and Nathan Prescott? 
Not just them. Yep. I just want to beat the shit out of those particular bros. And even Bear. though I don't know her, it feels like Rachel is guiding us to the truth. Fuck the truth. I just want to find my friend right now. It scares me to think where she could be. Do you think she's... Alive? I have to think that, Chloe. Her spirit is so powerful here. Maybe too much power. Max, we have to find Rachel soon. We have to. I promise you we will. Like you said, it's time to start the search for clues. Now tell me what's your secret. Drum roll, please. I present the spare keys to Blackwell. Thank you, step prick. You are such a boss, Chloe. I just don't want you to get into any more trouble. Look at all the trouble dropping in Arcadia Bay. At this point, who gives a fuck anymore? We're in it to win it, Max. Lead the way. I'm so glad you're my partner in crime. As long as you're my partner in time. Insert groan here. Max mentions Clo uh, Rachel's spirit. Spirits are generally associated with the dead, you know. Yeah, it's it's not often that a living person person's spirit is able to guide. So, if you have a like, if you're feeling like her spirit is guiding you, that might indicate that she's dead. Just. Just put it out there. Thank you again so much for helping me put together a portfolio. Hopefully the rest of the class will follow your lead. I'm sorry I was distracted. As you know, it's not been a good day for Blackwell. I know this has been an awful day and you can talk to me anytime, Mr. Jefferson. Thank you, Victoria. I'm glad it had a relatively happy ending. I don't know what I would have done if Katie jumped. Katie? I had no idea you two were that close. Did she? Well, how does this affect the Everyday Heroes contest? It does Such a bitch. The contest is still a go, and I still have to pick the winner to best represent Blackwell. I've got all the photos, except one from Max. I'll give you a one-word sneak preview of Max's photo. Selfie. Listen, you've seen my entry. You know what's better than that. Wouldn't that be so cool to hang out together in San Francisco, Mark? Stick to Mr. Jefferson, Victoria, please. And, uh, I haven't picked a winner yet. You already love my work, so it's not like you're playing favorites. Just imagine if you picked my photo, though. We would have to spend a lot of time together. That could be fun, don't you think? I'm going to think that you didn't say any of that. You might as well Ooh. choose me. Otherwise, I might have to tell people you offered to choose my photo for favors or something. As a favor to your future, I'll also ignore that undisguised threat. <laughs> this conversation is officially over, Miss Chase. I suggest you go back to your dorm now. Wait! I only... Ooh. Ooh, damn, Victoria! Are you fucking kidding me? Shut down! So stupid. Just when I think Victoria can't get any more evil. Shit is about to get real at Blackwell. Let's go find out. First trying seduction, then trying uh, blackmail? Damn! Chloe the Keymaster. You know it. Dude, I don't know about this. We're both already in so much trouble. Not to mention the weed you brought into my room. Joking. I'm serious. We're not kids anymore. We're breaking and entering. If I have a key, how can it be breaking? They can't charge us for just entering. I'm yeah, serious. Yeah, they can. We could go to jail. Not if I'm related to the head of Blackwell Security. Step shit will not want me in the hands of the local police. So we better find out what's in the principal's office first. You can rewind if we get caught, right? You have mad powers, Max. But my powers didn't save Kate. Maybe I did on my own. Come on, one more door and our work here is done. 
So yeah, um, uh, yeah, man. Jefferson trying to be a good dude. He's like, he's trying to be a good guy there. And Victoria's making it real hard for him. Not because he's tempted, but because it's like, I will fucking punch you if you keep this up, bitch. <laughs> like, just damn, girl. Read the room, you know? Clearly, seduction isn't working. Uh, anyway, this is, uh, I suppose I'll read through the entries and then. October 9th. Dear Diary, I have the power to rewind time, and I ended up on a rooftop trying to prevent my, trying to stop my friend from jumping off while trying to prevent the possible destruction of my hometown. I fell asleep at my desk and woke up re reaching out to rewind, or grab Kate. I remember when my journal entries were about which anime character I wanted to be. Or my dreams of being a respected globe-hopping photographer. Or what me and Chloe would be doing when we are finally adults. At least we know how that turned out so far. Chloe is determined to get to the bottom of what's going on. So I've been playing What Would Chloe Do? Which means blowing off my Blackwell homework to research everything I can find on Kate Marsh, Rachel Amber, and the esteemed Prescotts. It would be too easy-peasy if they were all connected, but at this point... I think the whole town of Arcadia Bay is connected to this crazy shit. I can already see the story on the National Geographic channel. Mystic, scientific, or apocalyptic? The Arcadia Bay Tornado. Yes! Shudder. Speaking of fear, I still think about Kate and the sadness in her eyes on that roof. I'm so grateful she's alive. I love seeing the students at Blackwell show their support for her with gifts and flowers. Finally. At least I feel better now that Nathan is suspended. It's good he's off campus for a few days. I hope. I'm like I give a shit if the Prescott family sends a team of lawyers after me. Please. I doubt they would like all the publicity. I doubt their tentacles reach into the rest of Oregon. Not yet, anyway. Hard to say. If they're rich, then maybe. Leave it to Chloe to make me sneak out past curfew and demand I meet her in front of the main building in the dead of night. I knew Chloe would be all over investigating the campus after what happened to Kate here. This just makes Chloe more desperate to find out what happened to Rachel, if anything. It's funny that even though I think I can just rewind myself out of trouble, I'm in more trouble now than ever before in my life. If this was a top Twilight Zone story, I'd be getting set up for some serious irony, like I'm going to rewind myself out of existence or something. I mean, you never know. Maybe that's how, th maybe that's how the game ends, you never know. Can I honestly say I'll have this ability for the rest of my life? Are the tornado, the snow, and that eclipse just hallucinations, or are they genuine prophecy? More importantly, is this a curse or a blessing? Chloe is alive and by my side, and that has to be a miracle, which means there must be a way to stop my vision from coming true. Right? So, yes, I broke curfew to hook up with Chloe. She said she had something to show me. Like it looks like it's time for some serious detective work. Enter the Blackwell Ninjas. As I stealthily made my way out of the hall, I passed Kate's door and saw all the nice messages from other students. Too bad most of Blackwell didn't care when they passed around the video and bullied her to that roof. Everybody always cares when it's too late. At least Kate will see that people are on her side, finally. I hope I can visit her when all, when all this blows over. Maybe that's not a good choice of words. Uh, spoiler warning, we do get to visit her. Damn, that was too close. I was doing so well until I got outside, and of course, it was Principal Wells of all people blocking the way. The one person I least wanted to see. I wasn't ninja enough for him, so yeah, he busted me. But I finally got to see what the gossip was got to see that the gossip was true for a change. Principal Wells was shit faced. He didn't even try to hide it. In fact, he was a lot cooler drunk than sober. I can see why he's so confused dealing with Kate's family and the Prescott's and David Madsen. 
He still acts suspicious and gives me way too much tood, as he would say. Nobody says that seriously. But I can see that he's under a lot of pressure. So much that he's so wasted he can't even use his keys at midnight. Sure, he was in my way, but he was no match for my rewind power. After all, I had to go and meet Chloe. Bad Max. Even though I thought I was in full ninja mode, Chloe still scared the shit out of me, which pissed me off considering what I've been going through. Sometimes she's so damn insensitive to other people's feelings. She is, kinda. She is rather, uh... rather insensitive. Uh, she wants all my attention for her and finding Rachel, and she gets all butthurt if I don't have time for her. Obviously, I have time in hand. But I can't stay mad at her for long, and she was so damn excited about having the keys to the main building. And honestly, I was pretty amped up too. Even more so when we went to the front in front of the building and spied on Victoria talking smack about me, shocked, and worse, actually trying to blackmail Mr. Jefferson to pick her photo for the Everyday Heroes contest. She is freaking unreal. I give my, my, Mr. Jefferson major respect for telling her to get lost, even though she deserved to be expelled for doing that crap. This is her priority after what happened with Kate? I just don't understand Victoria no matter how I try. She's already rich, pretty, and a good photographer. Why Trost try so hard and hurt so many to manipulate everything already in your favor? I just hope that's not what I'm doing with my rewind power. I mean, it's because she... You know, she thinks she has a chance. Or it's, I mean, it's because she wants because she wants success she wants to make something of her life and she thinks the best way to do that is to tear down uh, other people who are a threat or even who aren't a threat, really but to tear down other people uh, to make herself look uh, even better by contrast yeah anyway that is enough for this episode next time uh, we'll explore Blackwell Academy at night anyway hope to see you there